Hi, and welcome back to Beans and Bezels. This isn't my first encounter with the Baltic watch, and I've had a Baltic Aquascaf in the collection for about a year now. That watch has held up quite nicely after being put through quite a lot of abuse, and I can safely say that it has earned its own title of being a tool watch. But now I'll be looking at something quite different from their updated HMS line. This is the HMS 2 in blue gilt, and continues the original Art Deco-esque design elements of the HMS 1, with a beautiful sector dial that draws inspiration from sector dial watches that I love from Longines and JLC, just to name a few. The design of this dial hasn't changed much since their extremely popular collaboration with Worn & Wound that resulted in the famous Salmon Dial series. But these are now going to replace the HMS 1 lineup and are now standard production models offered in three different colors. It should come as no surprise that I bought the blue gilt dial variant. Let's check it out. The case measures 38mm in diameter, 47mm from lug to lug, and 12mm in height. Without the crystal, you're looking at closer to 10mm. The entire case is brushed stainless steel, except for the step bezel, which is polished. I like the step design, but the high polished surfaces and the difficulty in accessing them with a cloth make them a magnet for dust and fingerprints. As mentioned above, the crystal is a high-domed Hesalite crystal. Hesalite does have a vintage warmth to it, which is what Baltic was going for with this design. But I'm not a big fan of non-sapphire crystals for everyday watches and would have preferred to see a domed sapphire instead. Admittedly, the Hesalite does have a nice vintage-esque distortion at the edges without really affecting legibility. I like this a lot more than I did the Laurier Gemini. The lugs are well proportioned and fit the vintage design language nicely. The drill through lugs don't curve down much and sit a bit tall on the wrist. There is a push-pull crown at the 3 o'clock position that is very well designed. The crown is signed and polished and has a very comfortable grip that makes it easy to grip and operate. There wasn't any crown or stem wobble and it felt quite sturdy. Flipping it over, you have a simple screw down case pack with the standards engravings on it. You have the option of an exhibition case pack too, but I don't think the decoration on the Miyota 821A was really worth exhibiting for another $30. This watch is rated up to 50 meters of water resistance. The cases on both this HMS2 and my Aquascaf are nice and for the price there isn't much to complain about. But what Baltic does best are dials, and the blue gilt dial on the HMS2 is no different. The dial design is a very Baltic take on the Longines and JLC style sector dials, and I'm a huge fan of those watches, so to be able to get something similarly styled for under $500 is wonderful. There is an outer minute track in gilt that is on a grainy media blasted surface. The minute track is very legible even with the crystal distortion, and the finishing is spot on here. The next layer is the ring of hour markers that printed on a radially brushed blue surface. The finishing of the surface reminds me of the Aquascaf's blue dial and I believe the color is exactly the same too. I wasn't sold on these numerals when they used it on the bronze Aquascaf but I think it really works well here. The finishing of the printing is excellent and the gilt borders on the hour marker ring are very well finished too. The innermost circle has the brand's name under the 12 o'clock and automatic printed above the 6 o'clock. Both of these are very tastefully executed. The base of this ring has the same media blasted finish with four quadrants delineated by gilt lines. The finishing on the lines is very good for the money, but I have to be annoying and say that I noticed some uneven application of paint under my macro lens, but for a $400 watch this isn't even worth mentioning. The handset is simple and suits this watch perfectly. The hour and minute hands are leaf styled. The hour hand precisely meets the hour ring and the minute hand extends right over the minute tracks. Excellent proportions here and they make for very easy reading. The finishing on the hands is good, but I noticed a few small dust particles on them. This isn't uncommon for a $400 watch, so I think this is easily forgivable. I love the seconds hand, it's quite thick and extends all the way up to the seconds or minute track. The dimensions are perfect and I think it's very easy to read. The polished hands are a bit tricky to photograph, but they play with light beautifully. Overall, this dial is 100% a winner in my opinion. I don't really have anything to complain about. The design is excellent, the finishing is very good and the hands are perfect. I decided to get the watch on their beads of rice bracelet. This adds another $70 to the price of your watch, but if you're planning on making this your everyday watch and if you like metal bracelets, I highly recommend getting it. The end links articulate great, which is what you'd want from lugs that are more straight than curved. As you'd expect from a beads of rice bracelet, the rest of the links articulate very well too and give you that fabric-like wrist experience. The clasp is signed and has a combination of brushed and polished surfaces. The clasp is press fit, but I've had this bracelet on my Aquascaf for a year now and never had it come undone. Be warned that opening and closing the clasp takes a fair bit of effort, but that's a good thing, since it also keeps the watch from falling off your hand. The case and end link fitment has some wiggle in the horizontal direction though. The vertical fitment is near perfect. This watch uses a Miyota 821A, which isn't the best Miyota movement out there, but for $400, this isn't completely unheard of either. And the Laco Augsburg 39 that I reviewed a few weeks ago had the same movement for a $410 watch. 
The rotor noise and gyroscopic wobble is significantly less than on my Baltic Aquascaf, and unless you go looking to hear it, you're not going to notice it here. The most commonly heard complaint regarding Baltic watches is in their price to movement value. And I will admit that for $400, there are plenty of other micro brands that are happy to give you Miyota 9039 movements instead. And if you're lucky, maybe even a Salita SW200. But a watch is often more than just a movement and the Baltic del delivers plenty of value in the dial department. My opinion is that if they offered a sapphire crystal on this watch, the number of complaints regarding the movement would drop significantly. I logged the accuracy of this watch over a two-day period and observed roughly minus nine seconds per day. So this is pretty well regulated for a Miyota A21A. The 38mm diameter and 47mm lug to lug width make it appropriate for almost all wrist sizes. It looks great on my 6.25 inch wrist and folks with large wrists can pull it off too because of the overall vintage aesthetic. The 12mm height isn't worth worrying about because at least 1.5 to 2mm of that height is the domed hazelite crystal. The case does sit a little high on the wrist because of the straight lugs, but this has a negligible impact on wrist comfort. I'll wrap this up quickly. This is another success from Baltic in terms of design and execution. For the $400 price tag, my only recurring complaint is the use of Hesalite instead of Sapphire. The main competitor in this category for vintage style watches is Laurier, and with my limited experience with their watches, I would go with the Baltic instead. But if you're looking for just a blue dial watch in the $400 range, the Laco Augsburg 39 is still a top contender, with the same movement, excellent cases and dials, and a sapphire crystal instead. But should you choose to go with the HMS2 instead, you can do so knowing that you're going to get one of the best looking dials out there, in a watch that just comes together wonderfully. And get it on the metal bracelet for the full experience, it's worth it. Once again, thanks for watching and don't forget to read the full review in the link below.